Hey everyone, I'm Tom from Sleep Foundation. So around our office, we've been really curious about a brand called Whoop. Now Whoop is a fitness tracker that emphasizes rest and recovery, but most importantly, and what kind of caught our attention was its emphasis on sleep. We wanted to learn more about the metrics that this device tracks, as well as why sleep is such an important part of any athletic routine. So we reached out to Emily Cavadalupo, who is the Vice President of Data Science and Research at Whoop. Emily, thanks so much for spending some time with us today. Thanks so much for having me. Excited to talk to you today. So Whoop started in 2012. Um, as you all were kind of getting the company off the ground and, and developing this product, was there certain opportunities that you saw on the market or certain problems that you saw that you thought Whoop could fulfill? Uh, maybe a different way of asking the, <laughs> the same question would be like, what were some of the guiding principles that really drove your business at the outset? So from day one, we were actually like pretty like countercultural in the wearable market because we weren't about like tracking steps and like giving you kudos for the fastest run or, you know, the most miles logged or anything like that. We were like recovery focused and, you know, that's where sleep came in. And so we really understood quickly that like, it didn't matter how good your training was. If you weren't sleeping well, you weren't going to recover and you weren't going to be ready to perform. And so the kind of founding principle was really that it was like, let's help people who are so motivated to do everything they can feel comfortable not doing everything they can. <laughs> um, that's so good. I, I'm, I'm kind of mindful of some of the competitors on the market who encourage you to to move every day and, and um, exercise every day. And like for some that can be really good. And I think like intuitively, that's what we expect from a fitness tracker. I think you, I mean, you, you've spoken to this already, but you know, what makes Whoop so interesting and unique is kind of the inversion of what it highlights, right? It's, it's an emphasis on rest and recovery, um, an emphasis on sleep as opposed to just, you know, as you said, doing as much as you can for as long as you can. Yeah. And I think a lot of that's, you know, where we were coming from, like so many of our competitors, like the one you're mentioning, you know, we're, we're really targeting like that, you know, middle-aged person who like probably doesn't really work out and then trying to encourage them to like go from, you know, zero to five. Right. You know, and it's like, like the sort of couch to 5k type of ethos and whoop was really founded for these elite athletes who like don't need more motivation to work out and weren't wearing step counters or anything like that because they weren't getting value from those products. And I think what's been so cool, you know, in the past four years was seeing that like a product really built for elite athletes has translated into the general market. And it's because we were taking this focus on like how to recover better, how to be smarter, how to get more out of less work. I mean, I, so I, I get kind of the emphasis on rest and recovery, right? I, I sort of understand the idea that taking a day off can allow you to perform better uh, when, when you get back to an activity, but Whoop has made this conscious choice to emphasize sleep in that recovery process. Um, so talk a little bit about how and why sleep became such an important data point um, in Whoop's overall, I guess, calculations or scores. Well, I mean, there's a couple of different reasons to that, but I mean, it's undeniable from even just like the existing medical literature that sleep is just where everything begins and ends right like not getting enough sleep has been associated with increase in like all cause mortality there isn't like a single chronic disease that hasn't been associated with insufficient sleep right and you're seeing relationships between insufficient sleep and mental health between like every kind of cancer obesity diabetes all of these things. And I think, you know, anecdotally, we've heard things, you know, even, you know, before Whoop started where these athletes talk about getting, um, you know, I think like LeBron James got like 12 hours of sleep a night and like kind of got like made fun of for being soft, but like, no, that's like actually what your body needs when you're working that hard. And, you know, if you're not getting enough sleep, it doesn't matter if you have you know, perfect nutrition and perfect coaching and doing everything right and all those things, like your body will not recover. 95% you know, of growth hormone is released during slow wave sleep. If you don't get that slow wave sleep, you can't rebuild these inner muscles and all those things like after working out. Mm. Well, let's talk more specifically about um, sleep. So what are some of the, I guess, data points or specific kinds of metrics that, that Whoop is collecting on users to create maybe this overall sleep score in the app? Yeah. So at like the raw sensor level, we're tracking heart rate, heart rate variability. So it's like the change in timing between consecutive heartbeats 
We're also obviously looking at motion. We have a three axis accelerometer on the device. And then um, from these signals, we can derive things like respiratory rate, um, and you know a number of other kind of intermediate signals. And then we use those to first track sleep. So we detect the periods in which you're in bed. And then we compare those things night overnight. So not just looking at nights in isolation, which is what a sleep lab would only ever see. So they can only get like, you know, insight into like pretty extreme, uh, you know, clinically significant things. Um, but there's a lot of more subtle, interesting information when you look at these, you know, for a whole year, every single night and like how those patterns change. And so we're looking at things like that as well. Yeah, you mentioned the, the heart rate variability and I, I'm mindful that when I open up the app, heart rate variability is like one of the key metrics that Whoop tracks. Why, why is that such an important thing for Whoop to keep track of? So one thing people don't realize is like our hearts don't beat like a metronome. So if your heart rate's at like 60 beats per minute, it's not like beating every second on the second. Uh, that's actually an average. But like what you'll see in a healthy heart is it'll be like, it'll be like 1.2 seconds, then 0.9 seconds, then 1.1 seconds, then like 0.8, right? And so it averages out, let's say, to about 60 or something. Um, and that variability comes from inputs of your nervous system. And the reason why is because like, we get this like whole pile of like stimuli, both internally and externally that our nervous system is supposed to be listening to. And so that could be like, hey, it's time to sleep, right? That's a calm down stimulus. <laughs> and then there's also like, oh, there's a lion, I better run away, right? And so we want to make sure that like these types of stimuli that are going to these two opposing branches are both being listened to and not like one half being ignored because that means that our body's like literally missing the memo um, and stuff isn't happening. And so by looking at heart rate variability, you're measuring how much are we listening to both sides, which is how much am I sort of like, I'm basically like doing what I probably should be doing. So that could just mean maybe taking a day off or two, yeah? Right, so that like stops stimulating, that activating side kind of gives the deactivating side a chance to be listened to and like work through its agenda. Um, <laughs> So one of the things that you mentioned at the outset was part of your job was to compare some of what the data WHOOP straps offer to kind of those more gold standard um, tests like polysomnographs. So based on your experience and, and based on the research you've done, how, how do they compare? Like how does the WHOOP kind of stand up to some of those more costly gold standard tests you would get in a sleep lab? Yeah, well, we're really proud it to be, you know, the most accurate sleep tracker on the market. And one of the reasons that we've been able to do this is because the product, like from the hardware up, is purpose built for this. You know, we've optimized like the shape of the lens on the bottom of the device, you know, the exact wavelength of the LEDs we're using to get the heart rate, you know, all these different things around optimizing for sleep. Um, as well as like how we utilize the hardware itself. So like a lot of um, you know, competitor devices have things like beautiful screens and those things are very battery hungry. And so in order to not have like, you know, six hour battery life, they put a lot of battery into the screen and then they sample the heart rate less often. And so they have a lower resolution signal because it's like a sort of, you know, like a feature on the side instead of like a core of their product. We kind of do like one thing and we do it really well by putting all of our battery and all of our, you know, CPU and you know, the computing resources on the device, like into getting really, really accurate high resolution signals. So I want to actually jump back to something you mentioned at the beginning. You talked about um, how Whoop kind of encourages elite athletes to actually embrace more active recovery, sleep, that sort of thing. I also know that Whoop is big in the CrossFit space. Um, NHL players wear it, marathon runners wear it. I guess the, the question I have though is like, if you're not an elite athlete, is this even a, a relevant device for you? You know, one of the big things that drove that, you know, on the research side within my team was discovering that a lot of the things that enable elite athletes to perform are the same things that allow everybody else to perform regardless of how you define performance. You know, we've been able to kind of translate the same application of like, how do I get my mile time down to like, how do I be more focused and present at work, you know, make better decisions, fewer medical errors, you know, be more ready to like handle this mission, you know, whatever it is. And so, you know, that's really a lot of the um, kind of how we've translated, you know, to other segments of the market was by realizing that we actually didn't need to reinvent all that much more like a lot of it's honestly like 
you know, making sure that the messaging doesn't feel exclusionary, but the science behind it's the same. We don't have like a recovery score for athletes and a recovery score for non-athletes. Mm. Yeah, I love that. Well, thank you, Emily, so much for your time. This is a, a great conversation. I learned a ton about WHOOP, so thank you. If you'd like to learn more about the WHOOP and hear about my experience with the WHOOP, we've done a full overview video. Link is in the description below, so check that out if you're interested. Again, my thank you to Emily Capadalupo from WHOOP. If there is anything you'd like to see us review on this channel, sleep tech-wise or sleep product-wise, hit us up in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I hope you sleep well.